Good day students, welcome to math.serve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over how to write polynomials with complex radical roots. Before we get started, we're going to review two formulas that can really hasten the process um, of writing polynomials with complex roots. The less steps you take and the more efficient methods you use will um, not only quicken the process, but help reduce the odds of making mistakes, all right? So let's do a real quick review on two formulas that I'm going to use to really smoothen out the process. The first one is a difference of squares formula. What do you get when you multiply a plus b times a minus b? The difference of squares formula tells us that a plus b times a minus b is a square minus b square. The reason is because when you, you're expanding this, and you multiply the outer and the inner, you get negative a, b, plus a, b, those cancel out, and you're left with a squared first, and the last minus b squared. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. Number two is the um, expansion of the square of a binomial. So what if you have um, a, let's say you have a plus b quantity square. How do you expand this? Formula is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, okay? The two middle terms in your expansion will be ab, ab. If you double those, you get the 2ab that we see here. And for the difference, a minus b quantity squared, this is a squared um, minus 2ab plus b squared. Okay, so these are the two formulas that we're going to use to really simplify the entire process of um, writing uh, the polynomials um, of the equations with uh, complex roots. All right, let's take a look at uh, the example that we're going to be doing. So the example is as follows. Example one, we are to write the polynomial, write the polynomial uh, with the given roots. So let's say the roots that are given are um, x equals 3, negative 2, 3 minus radical 2i and 3 plus radical 2i. Okay, so we see that there are four uh, roots here. So we want to write the polynomial of least degree, of course, that has these four roots. Okay, all right, so uh, first thing you're going to do is we're going to um, set x equals to all these um, results right here. So we have x equals 3, we have x equals negative 2, x equals 3 minus rad 2i, and x equals 3 plus rad 2i. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to set everything equal to 0. So all we'd have to do to set every uh, equation equal to zero is move the constants to the left using the appropriate um, property of equality, all right? So as a result, this equation will be x minus three equals zero because you minus three from both sides. This will be x plus two equals zero because you um, add it to both sides. And this will be x minus the quantity three minus root two i because you subtracted this entire quantity from both sides, I'll make it equal to zero. And this will be x minus the quantity three plus two uh, root two i equals zero because you subtracted this quantity from both sides. Okay, now what we're going to do next is we are going to use the reverse of the zero product property to express this as a product of factors. Okay, so that yields x minus 3 times x plus 2 times 
x minus the quantity 3 minus root 2i times x minus the quantity 3 plus root 2i in this entire thing equal 0. All right? Okay, so now we're just simply going to expand this entire um, the left side of this equation to generate the polynomial with these given roots. Okay, so let's start with x minus 3 times x plus 2. That's easy to compute, right? So um, if we multiply it, x times x is x squared. Negative 3, no, x times 2 is plus 2x. Negative 3 times x is minus 3x. And then negative 3 times 2 is minus 6. Okay, so just by simply following first our inner last. Uh, this would be the result we get, okay? So when we combine downwards, we are going to have the expanded form of the first two, which is x squared minus x minus 6 quantity times this story we have going on on the left side here, x on the right side, x minus 3 minus root 2i times x minus uh, 3 plus root 2i. Okay? All right, so the first thing we're going to do, of course, is equal to 0, is we write um, this, these two um, factors here with the complex radical. All right? How am I going to write it? Well, let's switch this. x squared minus x minus 6 times, now, instead of x minus this quantity, I'm going to um, use the associative property to rewrite this as x minus 3, group it together, minus root 2i. Okay? And then the same first process will be applied to this factor. You write it as x minus 3 plus root 2i equals 0. So you might wonder, what did we accomplish by rewriting these two factors in this form? Well, I was going, I'm setting this situation up to take advantage of the difference of squares formula, okay? So picture this, x minus 3 as a whole is like your a. So we have a minus this uh, complex radical, um, this Radical imaginary number here can be viewed as b. So we have a minus b. And what do we have here? We have a, x minus 3, again, plus b. This um, imaginary number here is b. Okay? So what do you get when you multiply a minus b times a plus b? You end up with a squared minus b squared. Okay? That's the formula we talked about earlier. So now we're going to have x squared minus x minus 6 times a squared is going to be quantity x minus 3 squared, that's a squared, minus b squared, which is root 2i squared. How did this happen? Remember the formula. a minus b times a plus b is what? a squared minus b squared. Okay, so we just took advantage of the first formula we talked about. Um, so let's go ahead and simplify this. We're now going to have x squared minus x minus 6. Now I'm going to take advantage of the second formula we talked about to find the square of a binomial difference. So it's going to be x squared. We do that. Um, alternate the inner, if you fold it out, you're going to have minus 6x, and then the last plus 9, okay? If you don't like the shortcut I used, which I showed you earlier, you just simply write x minus 3 times itself, and then, of course, you do the following procedure, first outer, inner, last, and you end up with this term right here, okay? Now, what do you get when you square the square root of 2i? Well, we get negative. The square of a square root 
the square roots and the squares cancel out since your inverse operation. So we have two times. Now what do you get when you square i? i square is negative one. Okay, so that equals zero. Let's go ahead and simplify that further. So we are going to have x squared minus x minus six times x squared minus six x. Now negative one times negative two gives you positive two. All right, plus nine is plus 11. So two plus nine is 11 equals zero. All right, we're almost there. We've got rid of the i and the radical. Now to finish this up, we have to multiply these two quadratic trinomials. Now, since we have a lot of terms going on here, an easy method to multiply in such a way where you do not um, have messy work or make mistakes is to use the box method. Okay, so I'm going to be using the box method here. So the number of cells or the dimensions of my box is determined by the number of terms of each uh, polynomial factor that I'm multiplying. So I have a three trinomial and a trinomial here. So I will be having a three by three um, box. Okay, so let's write the second uh, polynomial on top, x squared minus 6x plus 11. Each term will be occupying its own column, okay, in my box. And then going downwards, I'm going to take the first uh, factor and align it vertically. All right, so we have x squared minus x minus 6. Remember, I'm doing this, I'm using this method because I have a lot of terms to multiply and I'm trying to avoid, reduce the odds of making mistakes, okay? All right, so we go ahead and uh, draw our lines to create our, um, our nice little three by three box. And then we're going to proceed with multiplication momentarily. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get started with our nice little multiplication chart. Now, what you want to remember is the product property of exponents. Okay, let me just go over that real quick on the side. Whenever you're multiplying two exponents of the same base, like x to the a times x to the b, you add the exponents. This becomes x to the a plus b. Okay, so let's not forget that. All right, now uh, let's multiply. What is x squared times x squared? You add the powers, right? Uh, so you're going to have x to the fourth. Now, what is x squared times negative 6x? You have negative 6x to the third because this 6x right here has a power of what? This x has a power of 1. The last one, 11 times x. Now, when you're multiplying constants, you simply multiply the constants with constants or the coefficient of the variable, in this case is 1. 11 times 1 is 11. This has no uh, variable component. That is because we have x to the 0 here. Okay? So if you add a 0 plus 2, you have x to the what? x to the second power. Let me switch my colors out here. So um, we have uh, x 11, x to the second power. All right. Okay, let's move on to the next column, the x squared column, x squared times negative x. Remember the power of a variable, if it doesn't have any indicated power, it is one. So if you add the exponents, you have x to the third with a negative. Um, that's going to be negative x to the third. Okay, move on to the next column. Negative minus times minus makes this a plus. Six times, there's a one there. Use a six. X times X is X to the second. Okay. Last but not the least, 11 times negative six, I mean times negative X is going to be negative 11 X to the first power. Okay. We don't have to put the power if it's the first power, so we can just drop that. Just write it as 11 X. Okay. Now back to the um, first column and the last row, negative 6 times x squared is negative 6x squared. Negative 6x times negative 6 is positive 
36x. So that's positive 36x. And then 11 times, um, 11 times negative 6 is simply negative 66. All right? Although it's a pain going through this whole process, but the end result is very organized and easy to read off. Okay? So one thing you'll notice, because our two polynomial factors are in standard form, the product results in diagonals that are uh, that contain like terms. So by simply adding the diagonals, uh, we can um, rapidly determine the product um, as a result of this multiplic of this uh, multiplication chart that we have here. All right. So let's go ahead and simplify. X to the fourth is the only uh, fourth degree term. Now, if you look at these two terms, they are like terms right here. Nicely organized for us, thanks to the box method. So what is negative x to the third minus 6x to the third? We are adding here. That's going to be negative uh, 7x to the third. Okay, we are adding and subtracting, of course, you're just adding or subtracting coefficients. Now the diagonal in green, they are all like terms, the second degree terms. We combine all those together. Uh, positive um, 6x. Let me make sure. Okay, I got to be careful here. This is not a minus. This is just a line. All right, positive, negative 6x squared plus 6x. These two add up to 0, so we're left with positive 11x squared. Okay? And then we can combine the first degree terms, these two terms right here. 36x minus 11x is going to yield negative, uh, positive 25x, so plus 25x. And then our last column, the constant is just by itself, minus 66. All right, so uh, we just said that equal to 0. This is a related um, polynomial equation. So the polynomial function with the roots stated above is f of x equals x to the fourth minus 7x to the third plus 11x squared plus 25x minus 66. Okay, so um, this is your final result. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. I really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this uh, tutorial beneficial to you, please give us a thumbs up. Um, we will we'll appreciate the positive feedback. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel to, for updates to other great math tutorials such as this. If you have any questions about this tutorial or any pre calc concept in general, just place your questions in the comment section below and we'll be glad to address it as early as possible. More clips can be found on markgoodserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.